You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. Amen. Uh, we're waiting. This is Reverend Ray Rose. Uh, marriage Takeover should be started in a few minutes, just waiting for the uh, pastors to join in with us. Amen. Um It should be joining in a few minutes, I believe. Hello. Uh, oh, maybe they, okay. Well, maybe I'm missing something. Okay. But, um, uh, Marriage Takeover with Reverend Ray and, I mean, Marriage Takeover with Reverend Ray. Marriage Takeover with Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. They'd also do a Facebook Live video. Should be started in a few minutes, I hope. Uh, I'm just waiting for them to come on. I think this is them. Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Is anyone there? Yeah, again, this is Marriage Taken with Reverend, with Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. Um, I am waiting for them to come on the air. The program has already started. Uh, let me check something real quick. Reverend hey, Tamika, you there? We're here, Bishop. What's going on? We're here. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. <laughs> the broadcast has started already, and I got black hair. <laughs> okay, hey, so I'm gonna turn it over. Huh? Hey, hey. I'm gonna turn know. everything over to you. Okay. All right. Well, okay. All right. Lord, we thank you, God. We honor you, Lord. We just bless your holy and your righteous name, God. We thank you, Lord, for just peace. We thank you, God, for just being God. We thank you for this Resurrection Sunday that we are celebrating God in you. We love you. We honor you, God. We thank you. We thank you for what you have in store for us. We thank you, Lord, just because you are God. We thank you, Lord, for the rest. We thank you, God, for you being our keeper. And we just ask, God, that as we open up, Lord, that you would have your way, that you would have your way, God, in us and through us, and, God, that you would be magnified through this session as we give the people what you would have uh, given to us, Lord, that you would open up the eyes of your people, that you would bless, that you would restore marriages, that you would restore relationships, that you would heal, that you would cover, that you would just have your way, God. God. We magnify you, Lord. We honor you, God. We bless your holy and your righteous name, God, because you are king. Uh We magnify you, Lord, just because you're great. And we thank you, God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, God. We give you all the praise because you deserve it. You are worthy of it. And we magnify you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 book of Facebook people and YouTube followers. How is everybody doing on this wonderful and awesome day? This is Resurrection Sunday, and we truly thank God. I don't know about you, but we had a Holy Ghost time at Rainbow Worship this morning. So I just want to apologize just because I was still so You you know how you get on that Sunday, y'all, and you... (laughs) You want to get that nap in after after it's been a real good service. Hmm. So I had to make sure that I ain't have no more sleep in my eyes. I had to make sure <laughs> we're all ready to go for today. So uh, I say, is you ready to go? Hallelujah! <laughs> so it has truly been it has truly been an awesome time. We thank God for us coming together once more time and again. And I pray that something that we say do uh, bless you to take your to take your marriage, your relationship to the higher heights and deeper depths, yeah, to the next level. And so we just want to continue just to bless God for what he's doing. So um, 
Are you really going to put makeup on right now? It's just the gloss. Oh. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. uh, <laughs> so while we still give her some time to get things together, uh, did I we did. already open the prayer? Know. We did. Okay, we opened up in prayer. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dive into this thing. It's one thing that has been really kind of uh, tripping me out along the way. Um, when you get to, when you're dealing with, uh, what you say, when you, I guess when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with each other and when you are, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know how when you kind of deal, when you deal with each other and then you have to deal with the ministry fact, then you got to deal with, um, how do you say it? When you have to deal with, um, I guess the issues that arise, you know, oftentimes we can, we can forget we can forget, um, you know, one, whose we are. I mean, granted, yeah, it's the human nature of it all, but <laughs> but it's how you tend to move forward or how how how, how you tend to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Mm. I tell you what, let's just, go to, let's just go to 1 Peter. If you have the Bible, just turn to 1 Peter 3. Um, ooh, dang. Turn to First Peter three, um, <laughs> the, and we're gonna look at the the first chap, the first verse here. What are you talking about? I got it right here too. No, I got it. That's right there. Okay. And so, I guess from where it where it kind of trips me out is basically one on how we on how we're able to deal with one another. Because one thing that I have one thing that I have recognized is that oftentimes we don't know how to really I guess deal with one another because sometimes it can get to that pla- to that place to where it seems like, oh, you're losing you you lose yourself or you don't know who you uh yeah. Are you you losing yourself trying to like please the trying to please your spouse. Well, then that means to me it means that you're kind of going about it the wrong way, if you will, because when you, if you have to lose yourself in trying to and trying to be what your spouse would like for you to be, then you're actually losing what your spouse fell in love with. If okay. that may, if that makes sense. Okay. And so we have to be, we have to be careful because when you come to the to the treating of your spouse, that's where the difference is. That's where the difference is. I'm gonna need you to chime in here somewhere. So you gonna read the scripture or what we gonna I was gonna get into it. Okay. But I'm still so trying to say I up. just wanna say, ladies, it might be a hard one today. I love you, I appreciate you. You know I do when I'm in your corner and I'm walking right alongside of you. We are walking in this thing hand in hand, step and block together. But what I wanted to do, I'm very clear over the past month. Um, I'm really clear on the assignment that I have, and I want to make sure that <laughs> as we're moving forward, uh-huh. that we are in line and sync. Come on, in line and sync, in line and sync with everything that God has for us. So if you are tuning in to Marriage Takeover for the first time, this is a platform where we utilize godly principles, and what we do is we want to help and offer tools and resources to marriages. Uh-huh. We married now. Next month is 21 years. Yeah, and there were a lot of things along the line where. Um, we just did not know what to do. We didn't know where to go. We were almost on the, we were on the brink of divorce 10 years ago, just because I wasn't in alignment with what God said, what he wanted to do. And I was, because I was out of line, because I was out of order, um, I almost jeopardized everything that God had set aside for our particular, for our ministry. And so, but hold on, I'm sorry. With that, remember, it takes two to tangle, right? It takes yeah. two to tangle. But it takes one to change the, to change the atmosphere. Right. So in moving with that, I just want to say, ladies, we are awesome, right? We are awesome. We are change makers. We are atmosphere changers and shifters. We do a lot. We are bosses. We go to work each and every day. We're Listen, directors. This ain't no Beyonce video. This ain't no Beyonce <laughs> video. Well. Uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm go ahead. So, this ain't no Beyonce video. Okay. So I want us to think about that in a, in a sense and in alignment. When we go after things, we go after things hard. We go after mm. things with a sense of 
this is what we want. And we oftentimes we go, especially in the marketplace, we take it and we take it by force. Uh-huh. Only because when we, we've been told so long and so many times that we couldn't have this, we couldn't have that, we couldn't this, we couldn't that. So when we go out, we go out with a sense of excellence. Uh-huh. We go out with a sense of this is what we're doing, this is how we have to make it, and we go out in that vein. And so as we're warriors outside of the house, Mm-hmm. what now takes place when you're home? Right. Does your king at home feel like he's that warrior? Although you've gone out in the marketplace, you have these directors making them feel like warriors, the corporate places feeling like warriors, but then you come home and you don't want to align with what God has said that you should be aligning with because the line in the order is? Uh-huh. It's God. Uh-huh. Then Christ. Uh-huh. Then the husband. Uh-huh. And then? And then the wife. All right, so when we are in perfect alignment with that, guess what? God blesses that. When we are out of alignment with that, God is not going to bless a mess. Mm. And so what I want us to be able to do as we're going forward, and when you hear, like, what's going forward, we're supposed to be able to submit to our husband. Right. Right? And I want to use that. I don't want to use it casually because. No, you know what? It's not that we're going to use it casually. Let's bring understanding to what submit what submit means right. because when you look at submit submit just don't you have to submit to the authority to the order of what of what when you're looking at marriage now the thing is is that if the husband knows how to submit to god it shouldn't be a problem submitting to your spouse if but there might be a problem. And then let I me, said it shouldn't be. Right, no 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 but let me say this before we move forward say, say this. because God has Play some women in my lives, and this is, I am not saying to be submissive to an abusive husband. If you are being physically abused and you are being emotionally abused, you need to get to safety and get oh. to safety real quick. That's not what I'm saying. Right. So I want us to hear that and hear that very so, well. So hold on one second. Hold on one second, because the only thing that I just want to make sure I bring clear real quick. Now, if you're being abused, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. You better run like heck, okay? Here, right. I'm, just, I'm just saying. You better get the safety and pray because, because the thing is, is that you can't play with your life because you, how would the ministry be, what would your ministry be like if you're not there to move it forward, to advance the kingdom? Wow, man, this thing is getting serious on a, uh, on a resurrection Sunday. On a Sunday, baby. But when you are, you can still be submissive and still get to safety. Because right. then, because y'all understand, if the husband is not um, honoring you as to who you are, because, you know, as the scripture tells us, uh, for us to love our wives as Christ loved the church, I have not seen where Christ beat up the church. Now, I don't see where he tore up the church because things was out of order. That's different. <laughs> but, we, but, as, but as the husband man, when we begin to understand one, what God has given us. I want. I gotta ask one question real quick. And if you're listening for husbands, if any of the husbands listening, I want you to answer this question. If you don't mind chiming in for me, do that. Do you know what your wife's favorite flower is? If you know what your wife's favorite flower is, please chime in. I got. I got something for you. <laughs> I got something for you. I'm good. Your wife or your fiance? Because I know we got. Um, you are funny. <laughs> boom, boom. All right. All right. Anybody want to chime in? Five. It's the one. I'll mess with you. But no, nah, but see, it's just like this. I feel like for me, my wife, her favorite flower is a rose. She loves a rose. I thought she liked tulips at one point, but I said, listen, we got to get rid of these <laughs> because her allergies cuts up with those. But because she we got tulips and then we have a rose. Oh, so we're live streaming on YouTube, and I am not tracking the comments in YouTube. YouTubers, That's I right. did not forget about you guys. Okay, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got so, a rose and, and we, we got, got tulips. Okay, so now if we have if we have tulips and we have roses, right? See, 
I'm gonna talk about the roads real quick, and I'm I, and I have to thank my mom. I have to thank my mom because she loves flowers. And in my homeboys that's on here, you remember coming to the house and having a brother move the flowers. So, <laughs> but, but I have to because I have to thank my mom because she taught me against my own will about flowers, okay? And so when you are, you cannot treat a rose the same way you treat a tulip or a carnation or a uh, 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 lily or anything like that, because they all have, they all are different. They all can handle certain stuff. So it's like with a rose, you have to be careful on how you grab it. You have to be careful on how you grab it, because a rose has thorns. Now, you don't want that thing to prick you, and so you got to know, I have to, me personally, I have to be careful because, you know, my wife, she's a little feisty. You know what I'm saying? Hey, um. <laughs> a little fire cry, you let her loose. <laughs> so, but I have to be careful on how I treat my wife and how I handle my wife because, for one, it's a rose. It doesn't matter because if you shake the rose, what you have? You have rose petals. Right. But the flower itself is now broken. Right. So even though, even though we take joy in the petals, but remember, the petal is actually broken off. And so we have, you have to be careful that you, don't, that you don't handle your spouse in the way that she's not designed to be handled. And so for those that, that, that wives that love tulips. Stevie Tosin said, you preach the thorns. <laughs> <laughs> well, you already know, huh? So, so but, when you are, um, but when you are handling the tulips, that is a very fragile flower because now you're talking about when you actually handle, just by you grabbing a tulip, it can break. Because it's, it's, in its texture, it's very, it's very sensitive. It don't have a stem like a rose. See, you can take a rose, and you, the stem of it, and you can replant it. Ooh, Jesus. And you can replant it. So what are you saying? That means that if you break your rose, your rose can go and regenerate. Do you hear me? Mm. Think about it. Let it marinate, let it marinate, let it marinate. <laughs> so you got to be able to, you have to be able to catch to handle your rose to where the only where the only thing that it wants to generate is with you. Right. And so when you handle your tulip, with a tulip, you actually got to grab the basis of it. If you're trying to replant it, come on here now. But if you just want the fragrance of the tulip, then you have to be careful that when you bring it out of the garden to beautify your house, you have to be careful from where you cut it. You have to cut it at the bottom. Because when you cut it at the bottom, all the life is still in at the top. Because you cut it from the root, from the base of it. But you still got to make sure that you handle it correctly because if you do not handle it fragilely like it's fragile, then you can break it before you even get to the home to beautify. Right. Or if you grab it too hard, then it will put a crease yeah. in the places and, and not. So then when home. you put the, when you, if you grab it that way, it now stops. Now there's a break in the life of that stream. And so you have to understand, it's like, okay, what am I bring? Do I want to bring in broken, or do I want to keep nourish what I receive? Right. See, the thing is that when we understand what our wives are to us, because I know mine, you got, you got some that's spicy, and you got, you, got, you got some that's not. You got some that's fighters, and you got some that's not. But if you get them to a place, you can really find out who they are. But my thing is, why would we even want to do that? See, we have to, sometimes we don't even recognize the full scope of what God has given us with our wives. Right. And so if you're talking about trying to be a team player, then you got to recognize your player. You have got to recognize, Come on now. You, have got to, <laughs> you have got to recognize what you have. Because when you talk about being submissive, it does not mean because, oh, I'm the head of the house. You got to submit to me. No, that is, that is not what that's saying. That is saying that I am submitting to what you have to help advance the team forward. 
So if you have a if we're playing football and you have a better arm than me, meaning you can throw the ball further than me, but my hands are like Jerry Rice, then guess what? Yeah, you need to be the quarterback. And launch this thing so I can go get it. You have houses where it seems like the wife handles the runs the house. Right. But it for that home that is the better fit. So that it do not fall. Because I guarantee if you ask that wife, she'll tell you, oh, my husband makes me make sure I am very secure. Oh, it may look like I'm running things, but <laughs> you ask that wife, she would tell you, oh, no, nah, he run this. Why? Because she recognized her place, her place where she is most valued. It's just like you have some, you have some couples like in my house, in my house, I handle the finances. For the simple fact, it's my background. Right. That's just where it at. But yeah, he is more. The child, we tried that one time. Let's just say if things didn't work out, we saw more red than black. Had a little parenthesis. That's what the bank was saying. Okay. But but when you but when you when your wife like me, like I said, my my background is in is uh is deal, deals with finances. So with her, it's more on the uh, administration. It's just like this. If, you know, those that may work in accounting, it's a day, you run the check. That's what I do. But she got to mail them out because if I mail them out, they might not make it to the post office. You hear me? So, I, so she submits to me handling the finances, but guess what? I submit to her to handle the administration because now that's a team. And if you are on the same, if you're playing on the same team, there is nothing that you two can't, cannot conquer. Right. And so when you understand what being submissive is, that means that where you're strong, that's what I submit to. Because see, now it's like I recognize the reason why I know it's more than her being my real that completes me is because that she is strong in my weak area. And come to find out, I'm strong in her weak area. Yep. And so that's the thing when you, especially when you're getting, when you are getting married or just married, these are these things that you also want to look at going into it. Because if we are say, if we both have our background, and say if both of us are good accountant, a good accountant. Now, okay, then it comes down to, oh, which method is better? Because just because you're good accountant does not mean that you know the best way to get to the same answer. There's more, there's more than one way to skin a cat. But then at this time, even if she has a moment where she don't agree with what I'm saying, but then can we hit a moment to where we are reasoning with one another? Yes. And see, that's one thing where couples miss it because we don't reason with one another. You got something to add? I was just going to say, now, people, it hadn't always been that way. Oh, Lord, no. So the submission <laughs> for me, just because now I, I, I told you, so – I was, I am the woman <laughs> that goes out and I'll make things happen. I go out in the marketplace. And I, if I see that I want to do something, make it work, girl. I want to do something, I'll make it happen. So being that strong and knowing what that is and going out into the world and making things happen and people see the value when they understand the value and it's worth something, I then would come home. And uh-huh. my king wasn't happy. My priest wasn't happy because I wasn't in alignment. So when I say that it, it might, it's going to be a little rough for the ladies today, it's going to be a little rough, just, and I'm going to be as open and transparent with it as I can. Uh-huh. So it hasn't always been that way. I was not always submissive. I was not always in alignment because I did not understand where we were going. Mm. I didn't understand what that vision was for us. I did not understand and then there were moments because he wasn't in alignment with God where we didn't understand where we were going. So it was really hard and really difficult for me to submit to something that I didn't know where we were going. Mm, that's good. That is good. Because even in that, one thing that I do believe is that a husband should be visionary. Because without a vision, the people perish. And so if you cannot tell your spouse or your fiance or your it's probably what well, child, you know what we are. And so <laughs> if you cannot tell your spouse or your fiance where you're going, then it's like we cannot just sit here and wonder or just sit still. Why? Because life is always moving forward. 
Right. But I was still out of line and out of order because whether or not I understood what the plan was, I should have submitted regardless. Mm. That, that's the first I've heard of that one. Praise the Lord. Won't he do, <laughs> won't he do it? Hallelujah. Don't say that. <laughs> I should have submitted regardless. Now, that's not the case now. But I just wanted to be able to offer that as a nugget that even though you don't know where it's going, even though you don't know what it looks like, it's still the wife's role to submit. At the same, but and at the same time, you still have to remember because the scripture tells us that the wife sanctifies the husband, and so that comes in that time when you have that one on one with God and say, "Look, my uh, Jesus, listen, huh? <laughs> I thank God for my uh, for the for the rib that you have brought me out of. Uh, I thank God for this body over here, but but I he don't know where he's going, so <laughs> I'm gonna need you to give me some insight." <laughs> I'm going to need you to give me some insight. Be- go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I, I'm going to need you to give me some insight because just because the husband man has not received it yet, it does not mean that God can't show you. Right. Because there are times where I can literally miss it, but my wife will be dead on and be like, oh, so guess what? It's not saying that she's taking the lead. She's <laughs> she just helped realign me. <laughs> <laughs> And guess yeah. what? To submit is is a verb, mm. and we got a lot of educators on the on the line. <laughs> to submit is what? It's a verb. For it to be a verb, a verb is what? A verb is I don't an know. action. Uh huh. So if it's a verb and it's an action, that's something that submitting and to submit is something that we should always be in line of. It's an action. It's action. Let's work it out. That's now. just like walking. That's just like talking. That's just like breathing. That's just like Doing it is an action. Mm-hmm. An action is present tense. An action is not past tense. Action is not future tense. It's, a, it's present it's a tense. Present. So every day that we're walking, living, breathing, guess what, ladies? We got to submit. And guess what, husband? We got to submit. Yeah, but I'm going to let her keep riding on the ladies today. <laughs> I'm going to let her steal back. It's Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. You about to resurrect some relationships <laughs> on, Come on. on today. It, it's all about when you begin to get, get a little close. See, the thing is, all the time I remember I heard, oh, man, it had to be some years ago. It had to be some years ago from uh, Pastor Tony Evans, and he was talking about marriage. He said, oftentimes we get it mixed up because we date to marry, but when we should marry, we should marry to date. Because all the times when we get married, we think dating is over. Uh Uh-uh. It's not over. But my thing is, after we say I do, we start looking at, oh, well, we done had this big, big time um, marriage or wedding thing, but we forget about the marriage. Oh, it's good for like one or two moments. Then it's like, okay, now where are we going? No, but then my, have you taken that time to say, to, I guess, to, 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 to speak those, uh, you know, those little nothings to your wife, you know? Or even to your husband. He's like, you know, you're so beautiful. Have you ever took that time to fell us back to your boo? You know what I'm saying? Because why? It's what keeps it going. It's more than just what you did to get her or to get him. It's now what you're going to do to keep it moving forward. Right. Because it don't stop at the wedding. The wedding is just the kickoff. Right, right. You know, like how when you build a new boat, the first time it goes on sale, what you do? You bust the champagne bottle. It's the big kickoff. That's all it is. It's just an outward show for everybody else to see, hey, it's us getting, we done wedded. Now we about to do embark on this new life together. Let's look at, um, you have some mad real quick? Before? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. And um, 1 Peter 3, it says, likewise, you wives. Be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, uh, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wise. <laughs> Did you hear that? Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband, mm. that if any obey not the word, that means if any husband obey not what God is saying, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wife. Because of you being subject, because of you being uh, being submissive to, 
to your to to your husband. Remember, it still falls in order, but because your husband is now moving not not according to what God is saying, you can still win your husband over just by you being submissive. Yeah. And then to submit, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, so to submit is to give over or yield to the power of authority of another. Mm. Submit is also um, is to subject to some kind of treatment or influence, to present for the approval, consideration, or decision of another or others, to submit is a state or urge with deference, suggest, or per- propose, sorry. So if you're looking at that in the in the sense of that's the definition and the defining of the submit. Uh-huh. If we also go to, y'all going to get some word today, word today. Ephesians 5 and 21 says, submitting yourselves one to another uh-huh. in the fear of God. Uh-huh. Not the fear of my husband. Of man. Not the fear of my wife. Come on. Not the fear of my pastor. Uh-huh. Not the fear of my leader. Not the fear of my boss, my director, but to the fear in the fear of God. So if we're loving God, if we're reverencing God, if we're honoring God, if we are saying that we are aligning what we're saying, our marriage, everything that we're doing to God, uh-huh. we're submitting one to another. Yeah. We're submitting one to another. Yeah. So if it's a little hard, think about that. So I'm submitting because the Bible tells me that I need to submit, but I'm submitting because it's in the fear and the admiration, because it's a fear of God. Come on now. Lord, I don't want to be outside of your alignment. I don't want to be outside of your will. I don't want to be outside of anything that's not according to what it is you said that I should be doing. Come on. Come on. And that was Ephesians 5.21. And, I, and, I, and, and, look at, and looking at that, and looking at that, but also in looking at what she just said, the understanding of this is that when you know how to be subject to one another, in verse eight of First Peter three, it says, "Finally, be ye all of one mind." You will be so amazed one when you know, quote unquote, what kind of flower you have, and then knowing how to be submissive to your flower and your wife and your and your flower know how to be submissive to uh to the to the gardener. <laughs> the gardener of Jesus is not a praise Lord. And so and being submissive to it, God I thank you. Do you know from what I'm understanding is that God has given the husband the tools <laughs> to nourish the wife, because I'm seeing, I'm seeing that the flower is submissive to the ground. In order for ground, in order for the flower to grow, the ground has to be tilted right. Yeah, it has got to bring forth seed. Who brings forth seed? Oh, the man do. You have the oh, come on here now, sex education. <laughs> <laughs> you have the you have the egg, but man carries the seed. And so still we have to know how to nourish the flower. So guess what? What you put into your wife, don't be upset if your rose don't come out smelling like a rose. Right. And um, Sandra said that words water the flower. Of course. Take water the ground so the seed of the relationship can grow. Who is getting deep? Sandra. <laughs> Listen, you always got something to say. No, I'm messing with no, you. No, no, that's the frame of <laughs> that's good. Center, that's good right there. <laughs> that is good. But that's but that's just it. Why? Because you know, people say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I'm gonna be honest with you. There's some truth to that, but there's a whole lot of negative with that. Why? Because if you do not build up your spouse, then what are you doing? Because if you're not building up your spouse, then you're not having, then you're not asking for someone to walk with you through life's journey. Right. Because now you look at it, the majority of the, from the statistics show that finances is the number one cause of divorce because it starts with one thing and then it breaks off into something else. Like I said, it takes two to tangle, but it takes one to change the atmosphere. Right. And so when you begin to look, I don't, I, guess what? We don't been broke. Mm, we don't been broke, 
But we did not allow our brokenness to define our marriage. If we could, now, I'm not saying that it was easy. I'm not saying, yes, we had some hills to climb. But when I look around and think things (laughs) over, my bad. You know I can't sing. (laughs) You know I can't sing. I've been a broke everybody's little uh, little machine (laughs) because I can't sing a lick. But but when you begin to look at these things because we decided to to now figure out what's going on and why we end up in the same predicament. Right. And then when we submitted one to another, oh, shut the front door. we were able to come out faster. Yes. We were able to become wiser. Yes. We had a greater understanding. Yes. So we didn't have to go back. Yes. Yes. That, and that's it because it all, when you look at it, it all starts to submit. But the thing is, the thing is that when you submit, then that means you are submitting to the almighty God. Right. My thing is, I just want to be in obedience with Christ. Ooh. Oh, because if I, if I am in obedience with Christ, then guess what? God is going gonna, is gonna to lay everything out. Why? Because it doesn't mean that we're not going to have any more issues to come up. Right. It's just that we know how to handle them when they do. And I'll say this every single time we go live, you're going to go through things. You're going to go through things. Your marriage is designed to be able to go through seasons because if if you think about it in the sense of growing, since we talked about the flowers, when you're growing something, you're going through seasons. There is a season where the crop might come out plentiful, where you have a great harvest, and then there are times where the harvest may not be so great. There's a time where you have to do the watering, and you may not see the fruit thereof, you know, anytime soon. So you want to be mindful that you're going to go through those seasons. Hold on one second. I got to get this one real quick. Because even even the ground itself has a season of where it rests. Yes. Where you can't plant. It has to go through its time of rest. Because during that time of rest, the ground itself is heat. <laughs> From all the turning and all the seeding and all the, the watering. The... Come on now. Yeah, so just know that. And know that you're not alone. It's okay if you don't agree on things. It is okay. Listen, you're going through a season, and you're not alone. No, you ain't by yourself, I find the hand of the enemy that lets us think that we are in this thing alone, and nobody else understands what it is we're going through. Nobody understands what it is we're feeling. Nobody understands how, we're, how we go out. We're the bomb boss. We go out and do all of this stuff, and then you come back home. I bind that. In you the are name not of alone. Uh-huh. You are so not alone. Yes. You're, you are not alone. <laughs> I am here with you. That's all we're trying to say. Because when you are dealing, when you are, how can I say it? Because you have to understand, when you're talking about marriage, you're talking about oneness. It says, and, it says, and the two shall become one. You're not, you're not leaving behind who you are. Right. You're still bringing that with you. It's just, it's just certain, mm, there's just certain subtle changes that you may have to make in order to deal with your fault. There are some changes that I had to make, but it didn't change who I was because the thing is, the closer, the, yeah, the closer, the more bonded that we became, the more bonded that we became. Picture this, picture this. If you know anybody that have a shoulder injury with the socket, you know how sometimes that shoulder can just pop out the socket and come right back in? That's how a lot of marriages are because we don't take the time to bond. Because cause you got to remember, this is your rib. But when your rib is put in place, there is no slipping. Mm, I feel like preaching right now. There is no slipping. Why? You can ask any doctor that, you, that can tell you that. Because, uh, because the rib itself is so tightly fit, it breaks more. Why? Because the, the rib is there to protect the lung, which supplies the oxygen within your body. So I cannot break the rib because if I break the rib, then I show it my own ass. See, oftentimes we don't look at what it does to us. Because you got to remember, it's your body. The moment you say, I do, you just say, this is now me. Bone of my bone. Bless your Of mind. my flesh. Oh, come on here now. <laughs> We're on camera. We can't do these things. Ah, glory. And then so I wanted to just jump back. So the Greek word for submission 
It's to obey. Mm-hmm. What's the good it's word? It's obedience. I'm going to hear you say the Greek word. No, I see. I was mean, what the Greek word? I play. <laughs> so <laughs> the Greek word or the Greek meaning for submit or submission is obey. Uh-huh. It's obey. Men, what we have to do is, hmm? well, you have to do. I'm sorry. About to say, you have to do. You ain't no dude, woman. <laughs> Y'all got to do. <laughs> so, if you, if the men are in submission to God, come on. How are you going to have that ability to submit to mm, one another? To one another. Amen. 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 Oh, keep going. No, that was all I had. What questions do you have? What's going no, on? Y'all? No, it's, it's, it's that when you are, what's that? Ephesians 5 and what? 21. So when you are, when you are, when you are submitting to whom God has, has joined you with, you got, you have to understand that it, it brings, it brings oneness. Unity. It brings unity. Yes. It brings oneness. So that means when you step, and the thing that I love about it is that you become like-minded. And when you become like-minded, then guess what? Now, God can now really start showing some stuff because now you are literally on one accord. And now it's like, wow, whoa, God, I didn't know that we can actually do this. Uh, whoa, did you really see that in us? What? Are you kidding me right now? But these are just, these are the awesomeness, the awesome things that take place when you become one. And in order to become one, how do you how do you submit? You submit by first humbling yourself. If you cannot humble yourself, then guess what? It's going to be hard to become like minded. Right. Because the one thing that one thing that I love is that with with the marriage is that you have to check your ego at the door. It don't take away from men. It does not take away who you are. I can beat on my chest like a gorilla all day if I want to. But if I don't know how to submit, then guess what? Then there's a problem. Because right. even the gorilla itself submit even to the wife when they even to his the um you know the like the queen one. Come on, you gotta look at just just look at Animal Planet. You understand what I'm saying? But even even. The gorilla knows that while the wife is still tending to are the female uh, gorilla, no, I'm the oh, lion gorilla. gorilla. I'm gonna need you to stay with me now. Stay yeah. with me. So, <laughs> so even the female gorilla still looks to say, "Oh yeah, okay, I know you got my back. You gonna tell me what's coming on? Why? Because as as husbands, as men, we're not gonna see everything. Period. But when you're like minded, then you know, <laughs> primate. Thank you. So, oh, yeah, we got some educators on. <laughs> so the gorilla, the gorilla even leans on the primate. Why? Because we know that we're in this together. Right. But oftentimes it's funny how, you know, we can have an issue come up, but then we want to silence one another. Right. That's no place to be because when you silence one, then you allow the enemy to play on them. Right. That's good. Oh, you ain't got nothing. I don't have any okay. more. You good? You, so, you good? So when and so so we have to understand one thing that I would double dog dare y'all. If you with your spouse right now, reach out and give them a hug and a kiss. Oh, ooh, <laughs> we are loud in the microphone. We're gonna, we're gonna do a little more of that later. Praise Back the Lord. It. <laughs> it's Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. We still talking about the things of God. And do you know that the marriage is one of the most valued and most important relationships that God has, like he admires. Ministry is built on the church, on relationship, right. Marriage. So if you can't come into that happy marriage and union with God, how are we going to be able to build upon that marriage? Mm. Like it's impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the one thing that you under, the one thing that you have to understand is that when you begin, for those educators out there, when you begin to search the scripture, you're gonna, you'll see that the church itself is built off of marriage. When you look at the structure of the church, it's built off of marriage. It's built off of family. But where does family start? It starts with the marriage because if you're not married, then how can you handle what God is doing? 
in your life? Or how if you cannot handle the marriage, then how are you going to be able to handle anything else that's taking place around? How are you going to be able to handle the things of God? Because when you begin to look at the things that Christ has done, now we just we talked about Resurrection Sunday. If He rose with all power in His hand, because this is the this is the day that He got up. So then now you tell me how am I now how am I really walking according to according to what God has said? Because if He rose with all power in His hand, then therefore. And he already said that greater works that we shall do. Then tell me, when are we going to actually utilize the word and what it has been given to? And I want to just say this as well, just because it just dropped in my spirit. Don't say I, it. I want to make sure that we're not, um, <laughs> that we, we, we check the enemy and the, and the motives of the enemy. This is not saying that if you're single or you're divorced or that you're widowed, that God doesn't have an assignment for you. That's no, not what we're that's saying. that's not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. Um, so I want to make sure that we drop that in as well. You know what? Let me let me deal with that one real quick. Because this is the thing. You tell me this. Tell me this. When Christ was in the garden, why did he say, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass? Because the thing is, the reason being, and what I grabbed from what God was showing me was that what he was going to the cross for is for was also for the ones that did not believe. It was also for the ones that did not take heed to his word. So the thing is, you got to know that yet God still covered you. So it does not matter if you messed up in your first marriage. It does not matter. Right, but right. now you have the key to utilize. If God blesses you with a second one. Right, right. Or if he blesses you with a third one. <laughs> now, wait a minute. They say third time is the charm. I'm just saying. But it's just <laughs> however right. you see fit. But what I'm saying is, is that oftentimes we got to know how to go to God for what's going on. Right. So this is not a condemnation if you've been divorced. This is not a condemnation if you're single. This is not a condemnation if you are widowed. This is not a condemnation if... Um, what was the other one? It's I don't even remember. My, all, all of them. All of so God has an assignment for you, but what it is, but our assignment is for marriages. Right. And so I just want to make sure that that's clear. I, I just huh. felt that, and it just dropped in. So I just wanted to just make sure <laughs> that we air that out. So if you're so if you're single, remember this is for marriages. Praise the Lord. And if you're working to be like you might be engaged, you might be <laughs> on that path to recovering. <laughs> To be able to find that, and so I just and so and that's cool. And take, there is no judgment, there is no condemnation. Right, there is right. The truth tells, for there are now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh but after the spirit. And so, if one, if your heart is in the right place, then guess what? Then you're then you are in the right place. And don't you let no man, and, no oh, preacher, no teacher, no right, whatever, whoever tell you anything different than that. Boom, you got it. If you gotta, you gotta tell them. You can tell them that, bro. Talks are standing right here on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Bam. Now what? And so we gonna get, <laughs> we gonna get back to that drop in the spirit. Praise the Lord. And so the thing is, is that it does not matter if you messed up because we've been on the brink of divorce. We right. know how that whole thing feels. Right. I'm trying to tell you. But the thing is, because oftentimes we so quick to throw in the towel. But my thing, because it's not, we're not saying that you're not going to have issues because you are, because he said the two shall become one. Right. And then when you begin to think about it, don't you have issues in your own body? Mm. Like me, I got too fat. So that was an issue of mine. Y'all saw <laughs> our, you saw, you saw our little, our little video. We yeah. we, out, we try to get it right. <laughs> yeah, we try to get it right. So what are you saying? That still, even in your marriage, you're still going to come against. Um, you're still going to come against the adversary. Why? Especially when you are unified. Oh, my God. You're going to really come up against some things. Why? Because I have, because what would the enemy do if he cannot bring division? If he can bring division to you to where you can just, you can live in the same house and that she just quiet. But then now you're no effect to the kingdom. Right. You're no effect to your kids. Then you're, you're no effect because now you're teaching your children how to treat your how to how to treat your spouse, mm. and then the Bible says, and so one can take what a, a thousand one, to fight, and two, ten. and then two take ten thousand. So in that unity and that bondage, that bond of the unity, that when the two come together, guess what? You can do so much more for the kingdom 
when everything is moving in, in, in line and sync with how it's supposed to be. Amen, preacher. Boom. And so that's the and so that's the thing. Y'all got to excuse oh, me. Oh, it's seven fifty already. Time fine. We have. We remember we ain't get started to five after. Wait a second. Yeah. I just had to make sure there was no more sleep in my eyes. I'm just saying. Listen, <laughs> I woke her up time enough. See, that's what I'm saying. I was getting ready to start this thing by myself. <laughs> well, she had all the other tools, and I told you I had to submit. So hey, what what can I do? Be go halfway with it. <laughs> so you are amazing. Um. Do you guys have any questions? I know we said a lot, and I felt like we were preaching today. Uh, it was a lot. It's Resurrection Sunday. Oh, my goodness. I feel Jesus. Stop. <laughs> Coming in. <laughs> He's in the room. Uh, you told me to stop. So, wow. uh, <laughs> man, it was just, man, it was just so awesome right here. So, when you, um, and so, if y'all hope you don't mind, I want to give you a homework. Homework. I want to give you homework. Y'all know I always give homework. Because, see, this is the thing. You know, the word, the Greek, the the word rhema in the Greek, it means God's word applied. applied. And so with the tools that God has blessed us to be able to share, these are tools that we still utilize today. Excuse me. We still utilize today. And it still amazes me to what God is doing with us, through us, around us, no matter how you put it. And so if you are and if you're listening, these if you if you're listening, jot down these tools that you're getting, that you're receiving, and my thing is apply it apply it to see what your outcome would be. Right. Because my thing is I'm crazy enough to try. That's how honestly how I got into riding motorcycles. I was crazy enough just to try. I liked it. Let's go buy one. So, right. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like it's 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 literally like that because the thing is, it's just like it's just like practice. You hear you know the saying, practice makes perfect. And so when you practice uh a perfect practice, when you practice the tools that has been given, you're now also allowing the word of God to come alive in you. You also allowing the word of God to come alive, uh, especially in the very things that you are doing, especially when it comes down to your to your wife, to your spouse. Because I can still guarantee that some of y'all right now, that people still trying to figure out either one, I want to be like y'all, or two, mm, I'm glad I'm not y'all, <laughs> or three, what is what are they dealing with? So my thing is, you want to look into these things because just as as me and my wife deal with certain stuff, my thing is, is that we, God has not, he has brought us to a place where we don't have to air what we're dealing with because we know how to conversate. We know how to have the conversation with one another. It's like, hey, you know what? You kind of messed me up with this one right here. Or, you know, you heard my feelings when you said X, Y, Z. Or, because you got to remember, at the same time, your spouse is still changing. Right. And so and you, you have to be patient in that process. Yeah, child, you got to be patient. You got to be patient. Just like when I was going through my little weight issue, I said, I asked her, I said, do I look fat? Well, she, she said, if you don't button that top button, because you know your neck big, big. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> she didn't hurt my feelings. She said it very nicely. And so I just unbuttoned my top button. Now I realize a whole new look. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so when you're understanding, when you're understanding team, and that's what we are, we're a team. Right. We are a team and we have one common goal. And that's just and that is to reach what God has set for us. So whatever you have in uh whatever your team is in your house, then then that's you want to make sure that that's your common goal. Because the thing is it's just like they say, two heads is better than one. Right, right. Because that spouse, that spouse will be able to know or will be able to help out in the very place that you might not even think of. That's why. That's why. That's why I love my wife. I love her so much because she is literally, she's literally strong in the areas that I'm weak, and I've come to find out that I'm actually strong in the areas that she's weak, and so that's what complete us. I'm gonna tell you, I had a hard time. My wife went to; she had to go to a conference, and I was, I was so alone. 
because the side of my bed was empty. I slept on her side. It was cold. <laughs> then I rolled back on mine, and then I rolled back on hers. Because when you when you have those when you have such a tight knit um a tight knit bond just from the very moment of when she's not there, you know, you kind of, uh, not the spirit of loneliness, but you just kind of, you miss it because it's like, it, it becomes like it's not the norm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so the same time is when you begin to deal with, when you begin to deal with the uh, the certain things that, uh, uh, you know, with that you and your wife are dealing with, Actually, if you are if you are getting married or getting ready to get married, I'm gonna be honest with you. There are a lot of these tools while you're even in your courtship. There are a lot of these tools that's gonna help you to even get to know your wife or get to know your fiance or what is what's it called for the male? Fiance. It's, it's for both of them. Yeah. Oh, there's no okay. So <laughs> it will, and so that your 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 future spouse will even get to know you. Because also sometimes, sometimes you might need to check what you're getting anyway. Right. <laughs> you better know before you go. <laughs> you better know. <laughs> and get in there and be surprised. Be surprised. Like you got I, I was watching Sinbad back in some years ago when he was at Morehouse. He said, you know, when, you, when he said when you get married, he was like, you know, everything was just lovely. But no as soon as they got to the chapel, and she said, I do, I do, but some things got to change. Right. Like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> so, but, you know, we just said, because I'm going to be honest with you, I've had so much fun when we have gotten on one accord right. within our marriage. And it, it's the so fun. It's a great journey. It's great because it's beautiful I would rather, I listen. Don't hold me at work because I really got to get home because I enjoy coming home because understand that with your marriage, it is what you make it. Right. I get mad if somebody gets into an accident because it slows down for me getting home. <laughs> it slows me down. God dang it. Don't you know how to drive? You know, <laughs> I'm trying to get home. So. And- Go ahead. I was just going to say, I understand there's a greater purpose for your marriage. Like, it's just not about you and your spouse. It is such a great, it's about kingdom. Right. So if you're saying, it's about kingdom, where we're able to com- communicate and to reach out to you all, there are people that you all know that may not get what we're doing. They right. may not be into what we're doing. So as you take the tools, as you walk things out, then you in turn be a blessing to other relationships, to other marriages. So that it's about kingdom. Everything is about ministry. Right. It took me a long time to figure that out, y'all. I'm just really figuring that out. I mean, literally just figuring. Everything is about ministry. I do real estate, and there are times where I don't want to move and do what God is telling me to do. But the moment, because because of fear, because I'm like, God, you really want me to say that? You really want? You sure you want me to say this to this person? I need this deal to close, Lord. You sure you want me to say that? But the moment that I do it in my obedience, he blesses that. And not only does he bless that transaction to take place, he then brings me another two transactions that are getting ready to unfold. Come on. Everything is about ministry. Don't ever forget that. Right. It's about kingdom, building and edifying the kingdom of God. Of God. I don't care what ministry you're a part of. I don't care where you're going. Everything is about ministry because ultimately, if we're all doing it as we're supposed to be doing it, there's only one kingdom, and that's the kingdom of God. Right. Exactly, girl. That that sounds good right there. And so, and it's eight o'clock. I do want to honor everybody. So I know it's e- it was Easter Sunday. It was hard for everybody to come online. I thank you so much for uh, y'all. Know y'all had an awesome service today. It was some good food, and I hope y'all got a nap like I was able to get a nap. You know, you're gonna get a nap. Jumped on. So I we honor you. We thank you for your time. We thank you just for stepping in. Thank you so much for. Trusting God in us and to we, be able to listen. Yeah, and we and we also thank you guys for your support and supporting um, what God is is doing with us and through us. Uh, and also at the same time, we also want you to know that honestly, we're we're here for you. And anything yes. that we can um, do or help, because I'm gonna be honest with you, did we experience everything? If you ask me, I may say yes. But if you ask if you ask the other me, I'm but like you know. We didn't experience everything, but this is the one tool that I come to recognize that conquers every that conquers anything that anyone has to experience, and that's one 
that's your that's your that's your one on one time with God. Because no matter how you look at it, as long as you stay in line with him, with Christ, you can rest assured that everything is still going to work in his favor. Right. And so you got to know that what God is doing in you and even through your marriage, because your very marriage, no matter what you're dealing with, it could be someone that's close to you that they may receive Christ based off of how they saw you handle the challenge of what you and your, or what you and your spouse was going through. Mm-hmm. And so we, sometimes we just never know what God is going to do in us and through us. But as long as we continue to treat one another like the king and queens that we are when it comes down to our own house, then you'll begin to see the things that God is getting ready to do even in your life. Right. So, ladies, the women of words, I honor you. I thank you. Know that you are amazing. Know that you are beautiful. Know that you are worth all the treasures, all the jewels that God has for you. Know that you are just amazing. Rise up into that position. Mm. Align yourself and up. move Come forward. I love you, and I support you guys. Amen. And um, I don't have no cool words for the <laughs> fellas, so <laughs> fellas, oh, 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 oh. all I'm saying is be the visionary. Be the be the be the leader that God has that has that God has called for you to be. It doesn't mean that we're not gonna mess up because we all mess up, but it's that we learn from from right. our mess up and that we clean up our mess up because there's no need for you to sweep around my own my front door when you need to sweep around yours. Praise the Lord. But we are helpers of one another. Amen. So know that we are yet here for one another. We're men of valor. Strong and mighty. He's patting me, telling us we need to go because it's after 8 o'clock. And so we thank you for coming, for being a part of Marriage Takeover. Sometimes <laughs> I got to turn around and read the own side. Uh, marriage Takeover. We say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we give your name the glory and the praise, Father, because you're awesome in what you do. God, we thank you for each and every person, God, that has logged on uh, to hear what you have had, what you had to say. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We bless you, God. We ask that you strengthen every marriage of every listening yes. here now. In the name of Jesus, Father, God, that these tools that they can use for the upbuild of your kingdom, yes, O oh God, God, for the advancing of your kingdom, Father. In the name of Jesus, and God, we bless you now. So, God, I pray now, Father, God, even that your, even your word says, for now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the, uh, but after the spirit. God, I ask that you continue to strengthen them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. And, God, we thank you. We give your name the glory. God, I ask that you be with us while we rest and enjoy the rest of our evening, O oh God. Continue to strengthen us in the very thing that we may do. And, Father, we bless you. We say this prayer in your daughter's son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. And, Reverend Ray Rose, we want to thank you and When Christians Speak Blog Talk Radio for allowing this uh, platform. Thank you so much. You guys tune in. We love you guys. And also, we want to thank Raymond Worship Center for yes. allowing us to be a part of this um, great ministry. Hallelujah. And so, we, uh, and so, yeah, that's it. I thought I was saying that's all I got. All right. Love that's you all guys. I got. Love you. Mahalo. Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work. 
for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a Word in Season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, I want to introduce our newest broadcast that joined us in 2018, The Marriage Take Over the Body of One, hosted by Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. They will be addressing a wide range of topics 